In this video, we're going to take a look at our logical operators, and, or, not, and, XOR. And generally, if you're working in assembly programming, you're probably familiar with these operations in some way or form. So what I'm really going to focus on is just showing you what the instructions look like, and then showing you a few simple applications, such as how we can combine things like negation and and in order to only apply a negation to bits that we want to apply it to, this type of idea. So let's start off with some really simple examples. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move some values into EAX and EBX to work with. And these values are going to be binary values just because that's the easiest way to really look at the AND and OR and all these bitwise operations. So the AND operation takes in two operands, EAX, EBX in this case. And the operand here, EAX, is the destination, which is consistent with all the other sort of two operand things that we've seen so far. And generally with the AND, what we're expecting to happen is all of the bits that are like all ones are going to give us a result of one. Anything with a zero gives us a result of zero. So if I look at this and compare from left to right, I have one and one, which would give me a one. Zero and one would give me a zero. One and zero would give me a zero. Zero and zero would give me a zero. So this would give me a result of one, zero, zero, zero. Similarly, we can do things like an OR. So for instance, we'll just move these values back in after the end instruction so that I can demonstrate multiple ones here at the same time. So we'll move these back and then we'll do an OR of EAX and EBX. With the OR instruction, what I'm expecting is anywhere where there's a one, we get a one. Anywhere where there's all zeros, we get a zero, right? So working from left to right, one and one give us one. Zero and one gives us one. One and zero gives us one. Zero and zero gives us zero. And then the main one that I want to talk about here that's really interesting is actually the negation. So now if I negate EAX, we'll see that the bits will flip, right? All of the ones turn to zero and all of the zeros turn to one. So let's take a look at what happens running these three instructions. So we'll, we'll start off nice and simple here. So to get these into the debugger, we're going to have our layout as ASM, break out start. And we'll start with our first three instructions. So we do our AND, and if I take a look at EAX, what I'm going to get is the value 8, right? So this was what you were expecting as a result. I think we had 1, 0, 0, 0, which would give us a value of 8. So, so far, so good. Let's keep moving through. With our OR instruction, when we do that, we take a look at our EAX, and we get a value of 14. And this was because we had 1, 1, 1, 0 as a result. Now, when I negate EAX, what I'm expecting to happen is I currently have 1110. One, one, I'm expecting it to go 0001, zero, 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 which would be the value of 1. But what we're going to see is that that's not what we're going to get. If I take a look at my register EAX, we see that we get a whole bunch of Fs. And then there's that 1 at the very end, which is the value that we were actually really looking for. And even if I were to look at the smaller register, like AL, I'd still get negative 15 because there's an F and then a 1. What happened here was that the negation actually flipped every single bit in the register, whether it was a part of my number or not. So it doesn't actually have a way of distinguishing between those. Even if we look at just the eight bits here that we have in AL, it flipped all of them to ones that were zeros and then flipped to the one that I actually wanted to flip. Now this becomes a little bit of a problem, right? We don't want to flip all of those bits because, well, they're not really relevant to the actual result that I'm trying to get. So one question that we may have is, how do we actually remove that result? How do we stop it from flipping all of the other bits? And actually, there's something that we could do retroactively after the negation in order to get rid of all of those bits that we didn't really want. So let me simplify this out a little bit so that I can show you exactly what I mean by that. We'll do a very controlled example here. So with this one, we have EAX and we're going to negate it. And the result that I'm expecting to get would be 0, 1, 0, 1 as a result. But as we saw, we're going to get all of these different F values, which is going to sort of mess with our result. So what I want to do is I want to change all of those values that were set to 1 to be set back to 0. One way that I can do that is using an AND operation. I can AND EAX with a value that will ensure that all of those get set to zero. The way that we would do that is we would want to set up a number that has basically all zeros, except for the bits that we actually care about, which would be the last four bits. There's a few different ways that you could do this. You could do this in binary, or you could do it in hex. Either or is going to work. I think hex is probably easier because each one is going to represent four bits, right? So we would have four, eight, 
12, 16, and then we would have 20, 24, 28, and then we have the last four bits, which is 32, which I'll set to F. Since they're all ones, it will keep whatever value we had previously. This is known as a mask. A mask is basically going to apply an AND in a way that the values that are already set are going to remain, but the values that are not set to particular values are going to be cleared. So in this case, we're clearing everything but the last four bits of our register. So let's give that a shot. Let's make sure that I've actually counted correctly and that everything looks to work as expected. So if we take a look here in our layout of ASM, we're going to break at start and we'll run. We'll step through our instructions. So remember, after this first knot, we have all of this stuff inside of the register uh, EAX, right? We have all of this different stuff inside of here. So we want to remove all of this stuff. And the way that we're trying to do that is using this and operator. Let's see if that actually works. As you can see, it does look to work. It removes everything except for the value five, which was that last value there. So do you see how it clears out every single value except for the last one? And as I'm running this, I actually realized that you don't actually need all of these zeros. You could just put zero X F, right? So that was mostly just to exemplify that, you know, all of those will be zero, but if you put zero XF, it will just fill in those last four bits on the, on the right hand side there, right? So that would be the way that we would actually clear up those bits. So this is a bit more of an advanced concept, but it's an important application of bitwise operations. It gives you a little bit of motivation towards why we might be using something like an ant to be able to mask and clear out certain bits. So just to wrap things up here, we'll talk about one more operator, which is the XOR operator. So XOR is an exclusive OR. What an exclusive OR does is it only sets values to one when there's only one, one value. So what I mean by that is this one where there's two ones that would get set to a zero, zero and one gets set to one, one and zero gets set to one, zero and zero gets set to zero. So do you see how if there's a single one, the result is one, otherwise it's set to zero. We do that through an XOR. We could do AX, EBX, just like any other of our logical operators. We can quit out of this. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and set this program up. So we'll set this program up. We can break at start and do our layout. We'll run and we'll just see that our XOR actually does work. And as you can see here, we do get a result of six, which was exactly what we were expecting from that XOR operation. So with that, you know, I have an understanding of the and, or, not, and XOR operations and some different ways that we can actually apply these operations in our program. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.